For Seattleites, the taste for fine coffee has outgrown what chain store coffee houses have to offer. Um, Starbucks is good coffee, but I mean, just like McDonald's is okay, you know, and consistent for hamburgers. The, that's how I feel about coffee in Starbucks. You know. Seattle resident Peter Postvoit frequents Espresso Vivace, a coffee house that has developed a precise scientific method to prepare espresso. Owner David Tromer says releasing the aroma of coffee beans is key. It's just this beautiful coffee has been trapped for so long. The fragrance of coffee needs to be released through technology and technique to be enjoyed without degrading it. At Seattle Coffee Works, coffee making is an art. Even the Space Needle, one of Seattle's landmarks, has made its way to the coffee cup. Space Needle! Owner Sebastian Simch says, switching his career from working at Amazon.com to become the owner of a coffee house has allowed him to escape a dilemma a lot of office workers face. For most people, we have a lot of people here who work and who need the coffee to work. For me, I don't need coffee to work. Coffee is work and passion. I'm very lucky. Tatiana Becker is the owner of Trabant Coffee and Chai. She is another convert from a technology professional to a coffee house owner. It's, you know, there's actually a lot of engineering in coffee. I mean, there's just always new advances being made as far as equipment and um, techniques go. And so it's really challenging to stay on the cutting edge of coffee. Uh, it's just a really dynamic product. Perfecting roasting technologies and selecting the best beans are not the only things needed to make the sale. She's working hard in there, it's hot. We're doing research ourselves, thinking of opening car washes with the same thing. <laughs> well, I don't mind, as long as the coffee's good, I'd take a man in a bikini too. It doesn't make any difference to me, as long as the coffee's good. The girls say they feel comfortable selling coffee in bikinis. I love being in my bathing suit, so it kind of works out. Sometimes if I see something that's cute or I think it'll be comfy for work, then I'll pick it up too. I think I'll make more tips. From the opening of the first Starbucks to new coffee houses using cutting edge technology and provocative marketing tools, coffee culture has percolated throughout Seattle in a span of three decades. It's a phenomenon that prompts Seattleites to offer numerous theories. I like to think of it as just two simple things. It was just cold weather and, and really good water. Usually it rains here. I don't know if somebody told you that. But <laughs> People are very depressed. And so in Sweden, they came up with the daylight bulbs so you can you know, get the rays. And the coffee, and here in Seattle, it's the coffee that keeps us from killing ourselves. The Seattle residents are willing to seek out quality and pay for it. Therefore, you have the emergence of many great roasters. For producer Wang Yiru and Joseph Mock, Elaine Lu, VOA News.